Last year, around this time, I said the year of 2021 was one of the best years in video gaming ever, and one of my all-time favorites. And now, after yet another year of gaming, after playing through so many of the releases that came out in 2022, I can easily say that last year, 2022, was yet again one of the greatest years in video gaming ever, and one of my all-time favorites. Now this top 10 video is gonna be a bit different from my previous top 10 favorite games of the year videos, namely my top 10 of 2021 and top 10 of 2019. Those last two top 10 videos were massive undertakings of writing, recording, and editing. And while I undeniably enjoyed putting those videos together and was very satisfied with the final products, they were still nonetheless massive time sinks. I'd like to avoid that this time around. So, this top 10 video, in comparison to my previous ones, will not be as much of a spectacle this time around. I hope you all can understand. And also, keep in mind, I never planned on making a top 10 favorite video games of 2022 video in the first place. I had no intention of buying and playing and trying out everything that released in 2022, and yet, Somehow, completely unintentionally, I ended up playing more than enough video games to justify making a top 10 favorites list. And I gotta say, looking back at 2022 in video gaming, what a hell of a year it was. Especially for indie and double A games, which I played the most of in 2022. 2022 was a year jam-packed with intuitive and creative original titles. While there were certainly quite a few sequels to some beloved franchises, there were just so many more brand new worlds to explore and brand new characters to meet. I had an absolute blast playing through so many of the video games that released in 2022. Some truly spectacular spectacular titles, some I would even argue to be some of the new greatest video games ever released of all time. Now, after all that preamble, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining me, for listening to me share my passion for video games. In what may be the very last time I do this, these are my top 10 favorite video games that released in the year 2022. The North Wind, such a grand city wall. This must be Aphis. Number 10, Asteragos, Curse of the Stars. A third person hack and slash RPG Souls-like inspired by Greek and Roman mythology. You play as Hilda, a brave young warrior of the North Wind Legion who embarks on a journey to the cursed city of Aphis. A city filled with danger, mystery, and a whole hell of a lot of loot to collect. Asteragos Curse of the Stars endlessly impressed me, what with it being the debut title of brand new indie studio, Acme Game Studio. And for their very first game ever released being a AA middle market game of this quality, with this amount of content, it only impresses even more. The game sports some fairly beautiful visuals, while some of the environments may leave a bit to be desired in terms of color and detail. The game's special effects and particle effects more than make up for it alongside several memorable and detailed character models. Asteragos also features a simply stellar soundtrack, a must-listen-to soundtrack. There are some truly beautiful pieces of music in this game. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, Asteragos really stands out in the Souls-like genre in some really unique ways. For instance, you get all six different weapon types at the beginning of the game, and you can have two weapons equipped at any given time to simultaneously, instantaneously switch between on the fly during combat. Now, all six different weapons look great and feel great, and the real star of the show here is how you upgrade your weapons, abilities, and moves. As you continue to play through the game and level up and get stronger, you unlock new special attacks, abilities, new skills, and perks that continuously evolve combat and just make it more and more versatile. Enemy encounters and boss battles that may seem intimidating or even overwhelming at first transform into unique opportunities for you to perform skillful and stylish 
stylish combat. Asteragos also contains a great deal of variety in terms of both environments and enemy types, which one always hopes for and is happy to see in any Souls-like game. And given that Asteragos is a Souls-like game, we have to talk about the boss battles, which are all fantastic. They are visual spectacles, each with their own unique little gimmicks and deadly attack patterns to learn alongside some beautiful musical themes. I believe I can confidently say I enjoyed every boss battle in this game. They were certainly a highlight and I always looked forward to them. I also gotta commend Asteragos for its rewarding environmental exploration. There are secrets, hidden pathways, hidden loot around every corner. It is so satisfying unlocking shortcuts to areas you you've previously been through to make backtracking so much easier. In that way, Asteragos feels like a very classical, old-school video game. Lastly, I must admit, while the story and characters didn't entirely grip me, I must still nonetheless praise the obvious effort on display here. There is so much work put into the world building and the lore and the dialogue, just the overall story, plot, and narrative of Asteragos. While it is in many ways a typical fantasy fiction setup, there again is a very obvious and admirable display of effort put into fleshing out this world and its characters. And I must admit, I did like Hilda as a protagonist. She's not a one-note character, she's got layers to her, and maybe I'm just a sucker for that never-give-up attitude. Overall, I quite enjoyed my time with Asteragos Curse of the Stars, and I'd argue it's a worthy, standout entry in the Souls-like genre, which is why Asteragos Curse of the Stars takes the number 10 spot on my top 10 favorite games of 2022. Number 9, Metal Hellsinger. This game oozes style and a commitment to the aesthetic of hardcore metal. Every environment and every character looks like they were ripped straight out of a metal album cover. The story and premise, while simple, is metal as fuck. You play as the unknown, the Hellsinger, part human, part demon battling through the domains of hell itself while destroying hordes of demons, all in an effort to have a showdown with the devil herself for stealing your voice. Like I said, fucking metal. For a double-A middle market game, Middle Hellsinger's visuals are incredibly impressive. High amounts of detail in the environments, character models, and weapons. The animation quality is mind-blowingly good. Metal Hellsinger may have one of my favorite main menus in any game ever, just because of all the charming and badass animations that the unknown will do as you cycle through the different main menu options. It's just such a cool, unnecessary detail that they didn't need to do, but they did anyways. This game is a passion project, and it's on full display when you get into the actual gameplay. As a first-person shooter, the game is solid, with varied, fantastic-feeling weapons, a variety of different enemy types to fight, fantastic vertical combat arena design, fantastic gameplay mechanics and design encouraging you to use all the tools in your toolbox at the opportune time. It's just all so fantastic. But then we have Metal Hellsinger as a music rhythm game and it elevates this product to a must-play, must-try-out status. The way the game's rhythm mechanics are tied to its soundtrack and scoring system not only leads to some epic player-created moments, but also dynamically encourages players to get better at the game, because the better that you can play the game on the beat of the music, not only improves your gameplay, makes you more powerful and effective in gameplay, but it improves your score, and most importantly, just makes the soundtrack sound better and better as more instrumentals are added alongside the vocals once you get a high score combo. Hacking, slashing, and blasting away demons to the beat of the music and seeing that high score go up is one of the most satisfying feelings in a video game ever. Also, the soundtrack itself, Metal Hellsinger easily has one of the best soundtracks in video gaming ever. A must listen to soundtrack. I had a blast playing Metal Hellsinger from beginning to end. It was short, but sweet. And I knew after finishing it that Metal Hellsinger had to make it somewhere on my top 10 favorite games of 2022. Might as well take the number 9 spot.
Number 8, Dying Light 2. Sequel to one of my favorite video games of 2015, Dying Light, Dying Light 2 is so weird. It's such a weird fucking video game. The story and writing is all over the place in terms of quality. It ranges from downright bad to serviceable to truly great. Experiencing the story campaign of Dying Light 2 was constant quality whiplash. A constant roller coaster ride of highs and lows and never knowing what the fuck was gonna happen next. The game has certainly got problems, even outside of its story and writing, but goddamn, I cannot deny that the majority of the time I was having a hell of a lot of fun. Dying Light 2 still contains a lot of what I loved from the original Dying Light. Even though there are a lot of changes and additions, the core of Dying Light, the foundation of Dying Light, is still there. Satisfying, brutal, violent, and sometimes wacky first-person melee combat, alongside excellent and addicting first-person parkour movement and environmental traversal. My god, the first-person parkour movement system in Dying Light 2 is so much fun. There are some set-piece moments and areas during the main story campaign that not only provide superb first-person platforming, but get you into such a satisfying flow state of moving through the environment. Oh man, it's so good. Also something I loved from the original Dying Light that returns in Dying Light 2 is the constant scavenging for resources. Dying Light 2's open world is packed to the brim with areas to explore and loot to collect. Really gives me the opportunity to unleash my inner kleptomaniac hoarder. But Dying Light 2, of course, is a zombie game. We're here to fight and kill zombies, and man does Dying Light 2 deliver on that front. Once again, just like the first game, you can craft some truly wild melee weapons, combining them with different elemental effects like fire, lightning, ice, poison, turning simple makeshift melee weapons like bats, axes, and machetes into some crazy-ass looking tools of death and destruction. Dismembering and decapitating human and zombie enemies alike is so satisfying in Dying Light 2. It's gloriously gory. So with the superfecta of exploration, looting, parkour, and combat, Dying Light 2 creates an immensely satisfying and addicting gameplay loop. While I must admit I don't think I like Dying Light 2 as much as I like the first Dying Light, this game is still nonetheless a good game in its own right, a solid open world game, and a very entertaining zombie game. I quite enjoy Dying Light, and Dying Light 2 is even more Dying Light, which is why it makes it onto my top 10 favorite video games of 2022 at the number 8 spot. Number 7, Evil West. Cowboys? Vampires? Steampunk? That's one hell of a badass combination. Developed by Flying Wild Hog, the developers of the Shadow Warrior reboot trilogy, Evil West is a combat-heavy third-person action-adventure video game, which is heavily inspired by classic single-player linear action video games of old. In Evil West, you play as Jesse Rentier, an agent of the Rentier Institute, a secret organization dedicated to battling supernatural creatures that prey on humanity, such as as vampires. However, a new vampiric threat is on the rise that threatens all of America. It's up to Jesse and his allies to try and stop this new threat, one dead bloodsucker at a time. Evil West is one of those video games where the more you play it, the better it gets. As level after level, you are constantly unlocking new attacks, new abilities, new weapons, while steadily being introduced to a large bestiary of different enemy types. All while exploring a surprising variety of environments. While Evil West without a doubt is a straightforward linear affair, with combat obviously being the main focus and selling point, the game is still nonetheless so well paced and constructed in such a way to constantly keep the player engaged. The game is just so well made and designed. Also, for a double-A middle market video game, the graphics, visuals, and just overall presentation are surprisingly very high quality. This is a very pretty nice looking game. 
with superb lighting, colors that pop, detailed environments and character models. If you had told me that Evil West was a AAA video game just based off the visuals alone, I'd believe you. But oh my lord, combat is where this game shines the most. Being able to seamlessly transition from simple, straightforward third-person shooting to in-depth, visceral third-person melee combat. You've got some basic melee combos you can chain together, alongside some powerful special moves, gadgets, equipment, and a large arsenal of specialized weapons to switch between two on the fly. Once you get a handle of Evil West's combat, once you get into the groove of Evil West's combat. Once you get good at Evil West's combat, the game becomes so rewarding and satisfying. Dodging and weaving past enemy heavy attacks, shooting enemy weak points at the right time to either disable their special abilities or instantly kill them. But my god, developer Flying Wild Hog just nailed the feeling of punching vampires, werewolves, and zombies in the face. Pulling enemies towards you, electrifying them, causing this cartoony effect of seeing their skeleton flash in and out, while you punch the ever-loving shit out of them, never ever got old. Evil West has a certain B-movie charm to it. With its obvious love of monster horror, spaghetti westerns, and steampunk on full display. It's cheesy, it's over the top, and I loved it. I had a blast playing Evil West from beginning to end. I had so much fun playing and experiencing this game, which is why Evil West made it to the number 7 spot on my top 10 favorite games of 2022. Number 6, A Plague Tale Requiem. Sequel to one of my favorite video games of 2019, A Plague Tale Innocence. Requiem is essentially just more Plague Tale, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. You once again play as Amicia Darun, doing her very best to protect her little brother Hugo from both the horrors of mankind and the horrors of the Rat Plague caused by the Macula Curse. A Plague Tale Innocence was already a work of art, a must-play experience. And the same can be applied to Requiem. Just about everything I said about Innocence back in my top 10 favorite video games of 2019 video can be applied to Requiem. Sure, there's a few new obvious additions like a crossbow, some new craftable alchemy tools and equipment, new companions with mechanics unique to them, and while that's all new and nice and cool, this is still, nonetheless, more Plague Tale, which means yet another heart-wrenching narrative, an emotional roller coaster that never lets up, more superb writing and voice acting, more engaging and nerve-wracking third-person stealth and puzzle-solving gameplay, more haunting, masterfully crafted music, and more jaw-dropping visuals and environments. Oh boy, and that is something I must certainly put emphasis on. A Plague Tale Requiem is one of the most beautiful looking video games ever made. There were countless moments throughout the single player campaign, level after level, where I just had to stop and stare at the scenery. It is just non-stop, awe-inspiringly beautiful, these environments, these levels, packed to the brim with detail and bursting with color. The rat swarm mechanic is just as impressive as ever, if not more so. There can literally be millions of rats, millions of rats, on screen at any given time. It's bonkers. Now while I am mesmerized by the visuals and presentation, and while I certainly enjoy the third-person stealth and puzzle-solving gameplay, it is the story and characters I adore most of all when it comes to A Plague Tale. Our protagonists, the Darun siblings, Amicia and Hugo, are some of the best written and most well-acted video game characters of all time. And the journey that they embark on in A Plague Tale Requiem ripped my fucking heart out. Time after time, this game left me emotionally devastated. Now don't get me wrong, A Plague Tale Requiem is an extraordinarily well-made game, one that I recommend, one that I am genuinely happy that I played, but I do have my criticisms. There are times throughout the story where I would argue that Requiem becomes borderline misery porn, where the characters are non-stop subjected to trauma and abuse just for the sake of it. Oh, and the ending, the ending of the game. I am so conflicted on it. I do not know whether I love it 
or hate it. But that's the sign of a compelling and emotionally gripping story, now isn't it? Despite my reservations, I would still nonetheless argue that A Plague Tale Requiem is an instant classic, a true work of art, and a must-play experience just like A Plague Tale Innocence. It had to be in my top 10 favorite video games of 2022, which is why I gave it the number 6 spot. Welcome to my Wonderland! Number 5. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I couldn't help myself, I'm a sucker for the Borderlands games. And now that I've recently fallen in love with Dungeons & Dragons via watching Critical Role, it made Tiny Tina's Wonderlands all the more compelling and enjoyable for me. That, and I really loved the Borderlands 2 DLC, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, which this is essentially a spiritual sequel to. Now this is not a criticism towards Wonderlands, I'm not trying to make it sound derivative, but Wonderlands is essentially just more Borderlands, and I really like Borderlands. The first-person shooting gameplay, the gunplay, the movement all feel just as smooth and responsive as they did in Borderlands 3. The looting, customization, and progression systems are just as addicting as ever. The customization in particular is very impressive for a Borderlands game, since now you get to create your own personal, fully customizable character. And I don't just mean that from a cosmetic and visual standpoint. With the introduction of of the multi-classing feature, you can take two of the different class archetypes present in the game and mix them together, combining their different abilities, perks, and stats, allowing you to create your own truly custom class and develop your own personal playstyle. This makes Tiny Tina's Wonderlands one of the most replayable games in the Borderlands franchise. The build variety and build possibilities are nearly endless. While I very much enjoyed the gameplay and mechanical side of things when it comes to Wonderlands, what sealed the deal for me was how much fun the developers had playing around with its premise and setting. Because the game takes place inside a game of Dungeons & Dragons. It's a first-person shooter layered upon tabletop role-playing and pure imagination. This all leads into the creation of some crazy set-piece moments throughout the story campaign, where our dungeon master, Tiny Tina, will just will things in and out of existence on a whim. This also leads into several instances of what I found to be some pretty clever and funny fourth wall breaking humor. Also, the villain of the game, the Dragon Lord, voiced by Will Arnett, is a surprisingly great character. He's honestly one of the biggest highlights of the game and its story. Now then, however, if I'm being totally honest, a few of the earlier games featured on this top 10 list are just objectively better games and overall better products than Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, but I cannot deny to myself and to all of you just how much fun I had playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I was completely entertained from beginning to end, and I have every intention of going back to the game and playing more and even creating maybe a brand new character and trying out a new build. Besides, playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to actually playing a D&D campaign. In the end, I just had a lot of fun playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is why it takes the number number 5 spot on my top 10 favorite video games of 2022. Number 4. Signalis. Signalis is one of the greatest video games ever made of all time, full stop. It has easily become one of the new, greatest survival horror video games of all time. It is an instant classic. It is a masterpiece. It is a work of art. It is a must-buy product and a must-play experience. In Signalis, you play as Elster, a technician replica android. Awakened from slumber in cryostasis, she now searches for her lost partner. The journey that Elster will undertake is filled with strange horrors and even stranger mysteries. The game's implementation of multiple art styles is immediately memorable. The game's music is appropriately hauntingly beautiful. The atmosphere, my 
God, the atmosphere this game creates is intoxicating. The plethora of creative, varied puzzles on offer are so clever and engaging and satisfying to solve. Combat may be simple and straightforward, but my God, God, does it create tension. What with having to carefully manage your limited resources. Do I flee and risk taking damage, or do I hold my ground and spend valuable ammunition on enemies? It's these moment-to-moment -moment intense life-or-death choices that make Signalis' gameplay such a frill ride. But my god, this game is a mindfuck. The twists, the turns, the revelations. I guarantee you, you'll never see them coming. There are some, let's call them set-piece moments in Signalis that will stay with you. The game gets you asking questions about its story, its characters, its world, and then makes you desperately hungry for the answers. Oh yeah, and the game is just damn scary. I don't think I was ever not on edge while playing this. I'll repeat again, one last time, Signalis is a masterpiece. It is a must-play video game. It is an instant classic, one of the best survival horror video games of all time. It easily made its way onto my top 10 favorite video games of 2022, taking the number four spot. Number 3. Potionomics. Potionomics is a narrative-driven deck-building shop simulator with a side of dating sim. You play as a potion witch named Sylvia, who inherits her uncle's potion shop and his mountainous amount of debt on the magical island of Rafta. As Sylvia, you'll have to brew a great deal of potions, manage and upgrade your shop, and interact with a massive, colorful cast of characters. I'll get straight to the point, Potionomics is one of the most creative, unique, and original video games I've ever played, and I absolutely adore this game. It is yet another experience that embodies the word charming. The visuals, the art style, the graphics, the animations, my god, the animations are a treat for the eyes. So crisp, so fluid, so detailed. Oh my god, and the music, the music! One of the best video game soundtracks of all time. Consistently throughout the game, I just had to stop and listen to the music. It's so catchy. And it just elevates every other aspect of the game, from the gameplay to the graphics to the story. Oh, and that gameplay and that story is just so good. Gameplay first, oh man, Potionomics has such an addictive gameplay loop it has going for it. So, you need to brew potions, but you need ingredients to help brew those potions. And you need money to buy those ingredients to brew those potions. But to get money, you have to sell potions. But to sell potions, you need to haggle with your customers, which requires you to use an assortment of cards and build a deck of cards consisting of a variety of buffs and debuffs and unique effects that help you sell potions at a higher price. But to get these cards, you have to go out and explore the island of Rafta, interacting with a variety of characters that offer you a variety of services to help you get more ingredients, sell more more potions, and upgrade your shop in various ways. So the game has you consistently engaging with all its different mechanics and features to keep you invested and get you in the satisfying loop and flow state of brewing potions, selling potions, and using that money to help you brew more potions and sell more potions. The gameplay is so good. It's so good! But then we have the story and the characters, and they're all so likable and lovable and charming and adorable. And they're all so well written! There's no voice acting in Potionomics, unfortunately, but the written dialogue is so, well, well written, and just expresses so much personality, charm, and charisma that I fell in love with all of these characters and wanted to personally get to know them all. Look, deck building games and management sim games aren't really my thing, but Potionomics is just so damn good, 
So well made, so unique, so original, so endlessly charming that I couldn't help but fall in love with this experience, with this product, and I can't recommend it enough. I will argue to the high heavens and back again that Potionomics is one of the greatest video games released in 2022, one of the best video games ever released of all time, a must play, a must try at the very least. I adore this game, I adore Potionomics, which is why it had to make it into my top 10 favorite video games of 2022 and is easily my third favorite video game of 2022. Number 2, Elden Ring. What can I say about Elden Ring? that hasn't already been said. It's one of the greatest open-world action-adventure RPGs of all time. It's an evolution and revolution for the Souls-like genre. It's even fervor proof that developer From Software are masters of their craft. It's a must-play, at the very least, must-try product and experience. When it comes to me, personally, Elden Ring has my favorite story, characters, and world from Software has ever created. The lands between are just filled with so much wonder, mystery, beauty, and horror. The environmental storytelling and sense of discovery in Elden Ring is second to none. What with the absolutely awe-inspiring massive open world map, which the player is just given free reign of to explore at their leisure. And there is just so much to see, so much to do, and so much to loot and collect. Elden Ring's gargantuan arsenal and armory of weapons and armor to discover allow for endless means of player expression and customization, which of course can be applied to the gameplay as well. Combat in Elden Ring, for me at the very least, is so much fun and is so versatile, whether it be melee or magic. So many playstyles to pick from, short sword, long sword, great sword, axes, hammers, daggers, dual wielding, arcane magic, fire magic, dark magic, blood magic. Couple that with blocking, dodging, parrying, staggering, countering, and you have a combat system that is damn near endlessly replayable. Especially when you consider the massive roster of different enemies and boss battles. My god the boss battles. What is a Souls like without boss battles? And Elden Ring's bosses? Some of the most challenging, some of the most epic, some of the most rewarding and satisfying combat encounters you can have in a video game. Whether it be their creative character and creature designs, or the gloriously epic music that accompanies them, Elden Ring's bosses will most certainly stay with you long after you've stopped playing. And that can be applied to the whole of Elden Ring as well. It is just such a memorable game. While I personally wouldn't call the game a masterpiece, it's damn close. However, if we include PC mods into the conversation, then yeah, Elden Ring is a masterpiece, especially when you consider the Elden Ring Seamless Co-op mod, which just elevates the game to a whole other level. Such an absolute blast to play, so much fun with friends, but I'm getting off topic back to the base game of Elden Ring. Yeah, it had to make it onto my top 10 favorite video games of 2022, and Elden Ring was originally going to be my number one favorite video game of 2022. But a certain other video game released in 2022 and stole my heart and stole the number one spot on this list. But Elden Ring had to make it onto my top 10 favorite games of 2022, and it was easily, without a doubt, my second favorite game of the year. But as for my number one favorite video game of the year 2022, the game I loved even more than Elden Ring, well, that game was...
Solstice was my number one favorite video game of 2022. I fucking love this game so much, it has easily become one of my new favorite video games of all time. In Solstice, you play as the sisters Briar and Loot, a chimera and companion shade, respectively. Sent on a mission to the once holy city of Ilden, now invaded and overwhelmed by wraiths. It's up to Briar and Loot to fight through the city and uncover the mystery of what happened here alongside the mystery of their tragic past. Look, listen, I love third person hack and slash gameplay. It's an instant selling point for me. And Solstice? Oh my god, it's third person hack and slash melee combat is so goddamn fun and satisfying. Being able to switch between and combo together seven different weapons simultaneously on the fly is already just fucking awesome by itself. But then you have loot and all of her crazy abilities, skills, and combos. All together, it creates a combat system that is one, a visual spectacle, two, rewards the player for their skill and mastery over the combat. Third and finally, it just feels so damn good to play. I am chomping at the bit for more of Solstice's combat gameplay, whether that be through additional content, DLC, an expansion, or just a full-blown sequel. I want, no I need, more Solstice. This can be applied when it comes to the story and characters as well. I am totally invested in this world and in this narrative. I've fallen in love with this duo of sister protagonists, Briar and Loot, both of whom are voice acted by THE Stephanie Houston. I freaking love Stephanie Houston, and I would argue Briar and Loot are her best performances yet. The side characters are also great, the world building and lore is so good! You know what else is so good? The graphics, the visuals, the art style, the overall presentation, there are some truly gorgeous environments in Solstice. Sure, they're all variations of a city in ruins, but I'll be damned if it doesn't all look damn pretty. I also just love all the character and creature designs, especially when it comes to the bosses. Oh my god, the boss battles in Solstice are so good! Visual set pieces and rewarding challenges, all of it elevated by Solstice's rocking, intense soundtrack, which utilizes a mix of different genres and sounds to create a soundtrack and music that is totally unique to Solstice. And then there's the ending of this fucking game. No other video game has ever had an ending that has sent me this over the edge. I audibly said aloud, No! The game can't end here! It can't end like this! So, I need a sequel to Solstice, or at the bare minimum, a DLC expansion. I need more Solstice. I fucking love this video game and have so much fun playing it. Solstice is easily my number one favorite video game of 2022.